What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Ben Thomas Show. Thanks for coming back. Guys, one of my favorite comic book toy collectible stores in town has got a brand new location. And today I got a chance to actually walk through it and take some video for you guys. Now, I did take a couple pictures for the beginning of the video for the first a minute. So that way you can kind of preview a little bit what's in the store. And if you're interested in sticking around for the whole video, you can do so as well, because I'm going to give you my take on absolutely everything I found in there and it's some pretty cool stuff. So guys, stick around if you guys like the video, hit the like button, smash the subscribe if you're new to the Ben Thomas Show, and let's get into it. I give you Ben Thomas Showdown. Here we go. So as you guys can see, there is a ton of stuff in this store that I'm excited to look at. Once again, this is called Snap Collectibles in Airdrie, Alberta, Canada. Now they've got so many items that to be honest, are some of the first times I've ever seen them before. When I see Sonic figures like this, I think of my friend over at Collecting Weekly, Dean the Dream Martin, because he's been collecting Sonic figures like crazy. Now some of these sections, guys, I will speed through a little bit, because I don't know the level of interest and we've got a lot to look at. Look at that old school Luke up there. And Tales of the Crypt Keeper brings me back to childhood when I used to scare my sister watching it together. Some of these old Ewoks, really, really cool. I do love seeing the Super Mario figures, despite them being, you know, a newer generation of collectible for sure, despite it being an old franchise. Now, I really like seeing some of these sleeves. One of the cool things Snap Collectibles does is give you out of the box repackaged items for a reduced cost. Some of these pins are really cool. The Venom one here really stands out to me. I've seen that one a couple times and I really like it. I also really like the Deadpool, but I don't like the Champions logo in the back. Some of these Star Wars ones are definitely really classic feeling. And again, I know that some of these you can get at cons. Some of them are a little bit more on the rare side, I'm sure. I do really like that Ahsoka Tano. There's a lot of Boba Fett's there. Now I am gonna skim over the comic section, guys, because I'm here definitely more for the toys and the collectible side of the store, which is extensive. We're gonna be here for at least another 30 minutes, but I wanted to show you guys that this location, of course, has graded options. I see some Star Wars in the mix there. I definitely see some Marvel, some Spider-Man, some Black Panther, which is very cool. So definitely worth the look if you're in the area. The collectibles are what I'm here for though. Like I said, the Jack Skellington up on top, little plush toy, love to see that. There's a lot of Ninja Turtle stuff in this store. There's also a ton of retro Star Wars collectibles in here. So definitely stay tuned for some of that in the next coming sections. We got the Lord of the Rings figures up there. Those are actually pretty good, I'm not gonna lie. And I really like seeing dragon collectibles. If it's a dragon, I'm gonna be on board. Now, of course, it wouldn't ever be a collectible store if there weren't some Freddy Kruegers in there and some Halloween-style toys, but there's a mixture of so many things. Now, guys, I'd love feedback as well. If you guys ever want me to slow down in the camera action, also let me know, because I am touring through this place relatively quickly. We got a lot to look at. Look at the Teen Titans figure there, really nice. Some of these old school ones, that Aquaman, awesome. And Bizarro, there you go. Just a preview quick here, again, at the comic shelf, just so you guys can have an idea of what it looks like. I really like that Harley cover, actually. Got a few of them, though. She-Hulk. I don't know if that's ruined for you now because of the Disney Plus show, but I get it if it is. But again, really well-organized section, that's for sure. Now, this guy up here has caught my eye, though. 
I really like seeing T-Rexes. <laughs> They're awesome. And look at this. The Han Solo. We got a Boba Fett statue up on top. We got a Darth Vader statue. Looking really old school. I don't even recognize this company specifically. That's an R2-D2 telephone? What? That's awesome. Transformers. Very cool. Got the thing tucked in the corner here, just holding the bookshelf up. Love to see it. Lots of different graphic novels, which I really appreciate here. I also see this, which is interesting. It's an actual Infinity Gauntlet tucked down in the corner. <laughs> You'll love to see it. And a Gumby set and Friends. Gumby and Friends was a badass show back in the day. And I had Gumby at the very least. And his horse, I'm pretty confident as well, but definitely still have that Gumby kicking around. Now, it wouldn't be a collectible store without some Marvel Legends, but I do notice a couple here that stand out to me a little bit. I do like that group with the wings. That's actually pretty cool. I haven't seen that, I don't think, yet. Some of the classic X-Men packaging I appreciate, but again, I have seen these at some of the other locations in town. Nothing too crazy here, but still cool to see that 97 line. The Fantastic Four, I think, is around the corner and going to blow people away. I'd be surprised if things like collectibles and comics start going off the shelves. We got a Romulan Warbird from Star Trek The Next Generation and this shuttlecraft. I had this shuttlecraft as a kid. I freaking loved it. It's $45. I might pick that up today. I'm not going to lie. We've got the Klingon attack cruiser there as well. And of course, the USS Enterprise. A couple of Venoms up on top. And then we got the quarter scale, the cat <laughs> from Batman Returns. Catwoman, of course, the Michelle Pfeiffer version actually looks pretty good. Unfortunately, it would be too big, of course, for my six scale collection because it's quarter scale. But I do think that they're pretty detailed, look pretty nice. I do like the Batman and I cannot wait for the Hot Toys reissue of the Batman coming here pretty soon. Hopefully I'm seeing payments come, so we'll see. We got Avatar, not too bad. It does have a big transformer section in this store. Some of this stuff I'm not as familiar with, but I really love the colors of the packaging. And they do seem to have a pretty broad collection here. They've even got randomly this Anakin's pod racer tucked in as a model kit, which part of me kind of wants to try that. I'm not going to lie. It's one of those stores that you see things that you're like, oh, I, I didn't know I needed that until I saw it. <laughs> Some of these transformers are cool. And you can see how I said at the beginning of the video how Snap does put out of the box figures in their own repackaging to be sold. If you're just happening to look for a character that you'd know you'd want to take out of the box anyways, it's great for kids when you think about it. You want to take a kid to the toy store and buy him a figure without spending a crazy amount of money? These are the guys you come for, right? And these are some badass old school figures. So I think it's absolutely worth it. The pricing, not terrible considering. Obviously you'd spend more trying to hunt these down in box. Some of them definitely look a little bit more used, that's for sure, but I think their price really reflects that, so I don't think that's an end of the world thing. And again, for the smaller scale collectors out there, there may be a piece in here that's kind of like a grail for your collection that you never know when you're gonna find it. And this store has a bunch of glassed in walls with lit displays as well for some additional figures that I'm excited to show you kind of up there over on the other side of the racket. But you guys can see this place is just chocked full and we're just getting started at this point. Now this is actually one of my favorite shelves because it's got the ugly Godzilla up on the top there. I 1000% had that Rocksteady and Bebop back in the day. Look at the old He-Man up there as well. That's really, really cool. So many neat little pieces in here. I feel like you could walk through the store a hundred times and see something different every time. We got a Hot Toys. We also have a Mr. Gasser, oh my gosh. We got a Back to the Future Doc Brown in here. That's awesome from Hot Toys. And the Transcender, that's interesting. A knockoff version of Agent Smith from the Matrix franchise. You even have a talking Pee Wee Herman in the background there. Of course, rest in peace to the actor recently. Now they've got Hot Wheels galore in here. Up to a certain extent, I think you'd be able to find what you're looking for if there's some unique pieces for sure. I really like the Ecto-1s there. That kind of stood out to me. I'm not a Hot Wheels collector though, but I absolutely see the appeal behind them. It's just too slippery of a slope for this guy. Now again, we got some Masters of the Universe collectibles here that have been repackaged for sale, so you don't need to worry about the box. 
really like that. We got some GI Joes, which are really, really cool. I had a ton of GI Joes back in the day. I actually had like a plastic laminated case that had slots for them. So you could kind of lay them out in the collection. Really, really cool, but no idea what happened to that, unfortunately, over time. The old G.I. Joe packaging style though, I really love. Even if these are newer school figures, I like that, you know, companies have gone back to that older school looking packaging. We've got a Commander Cody up on top and we've got the chromed out Mando. That Mando is coming in at 500 bucks, but on the Canadian side, that's pretty darn close. Now, of course, Toy Store wouldn't be a toy store without having some wrestling collectibles. This guy stood out to me, the clown makeup, really like that. And of course, the Thunder Lips from Rocky Three. You love to see it with Hulk Hogan there. And then some of the, again, singular packaged wrestlers that are available as well. As you guys can see, if I went through absolutely every peg, I think we'd be here for hours and hours. This is meant to be a preview, guys, so that you can see what this store has, especially if you're in the local area. I love seeing old model kits. The droid factory with the different color droids. Love to see that. The He-Man collectibles in this store are plentiful. I will say because even the glass tin cabinet behind me that I'm going to show you guys shortly has a ton in it. Now some of these are newer school figures though of course. These aren't the old school versions. But again with the companies doing the packaging the way they are nowadays. Looks pretty damn convincing I'd say. Especially for the 40th anniversary versions there. I really love to see that. Masters of the Universe Classics. Very cool. Lots of different versions. Lots of characters I've never even heard of or don't remember very well. This is of course from the Netflix series. The Revelation series. Didn't love it but it was still a fun watch for a first round through. I don't think I would revisit it necessarily though. The two packs down below are really cool. I'm still curious who you guys think could be casted for He-Man if there's a live action version. I think that would be cool. They got a Hot Toys Boba Fett on throne up there. Oh man, and the Falcon Winter Soldier. Oh, that's gonna be hard to, that's gonna be hard to not leave the store with. I've been wanting that guy for a while. Different G.I. Joes here in packaging. Of course, we also have more and more and more Star Wars collectibles as we go along. The Biker Mice? Oh man, that's old school. That takes me back, that's for sure. Now some of these are just boxes, but some of them are literally still encased in plastic, which are fantastic when you think about it. And I know there are folks out there that do a ton of collecting of these old school boxes, which is really, really cool. Just as an art piece alone. Very cool. Some more of the more rare G.I. Joes, I would imagine, in the glass display case itself. Let me know out there, guys, if whoever's watching, if you're a big G.I. Joe collector, anything that stands out on these racks, I'd really like to know about. Of course, you're always curious, you know, what's the most valuable in these toy stores? And for the people with the keen eye, you guys know what you're looking for. Look at some of the Ghostbusters stuff on top. That's cool. I had some of those old school guys back in the day. Egon with the blonde hair, of course. <laughs> That's awesome. Guy okay, with the little shrunken head. Interesting G.I. Joe tanks in here that you can actually stick the figures into. I don't know if I've ever seen those before in person. Lots of vehicles for G.I. Joe. Clearly it was just an absolute win back in the day for toy companies. I believe this is the Thundercats section, <laughs> based on what I'm seeing in front of me here. All very cool old school collectibles as well. I really like that Thundercats castle. I don't remember the name of it. Please correct me in the comments below, guys. Got the snow speeder up top. The Imperial base. That's really cool. These are old boxes now. I love the old style Kenner packaging. It's awesome. I even love that Hot Toys nowadays for some of the kind of, you know, regenerated versions have that Kenner style window case. Love it. Old Millennium Falcon there. That's old school. Now again, some of these are just the box. Unfortunately, the collectibles are no longer inside. It blows me away though how long these boxes have existed for. We've got more Star Wars collectibles again behind glass here. Clearly some of the more expensive options, some of the more rare versions. Really good looking pieces for their time though. 
they still honestly hold up to me just as much as some of the newer school toys. Including some of the Playmates Star Trek figures that I've seen. Some of the new Star Trek figures that are out there at Toys R Us now and stuff are crap. They're just absolute crap. The old school ones, they knew what they were doing. Take a peek in behind there. Then you can also see down below. That is the freakiest Yoda I think I have ever seen, including the Darth Vader in the back there. Got the B-Wing fighter box. That's really cool. Old school. And I actually saw these at a different comic store recently, and I uh, did a quick short on them. Old school, though, for sure. Got Snake Mountain up on top, Castle Grayskull. Very, very cool. Tons of He-Man stuff in this store. Wow. Ooh, that one's in a like collectible box, it looks like, for that Skeletor. That's pretty neat. What else are we seeing here? We've got the Classics version. Once again, clearly the more rare ones. Got He-Man on the Battle Cat. The Mondo Battle Cat recently came out, and people are now starting to get some of their Panthor figures for Mondo. And those are really, really awesome figures. But to be honest, these older school toys still really hold up for a nice looking display, especially if you're a huge Masters of the Universe fan. I love the coloration as well. Like even Prince Adam there with the purple pants. I love to see it. The A-Team. It's even got the A-Team van there. That's really cool. Dukes of Hazard down in below. Back to the Future. Jurassic Park. That's actually really nice. I really like the look of that. Some old school Batman and Robin figures. Penguin in behind there and Martian Manhunter. These ones look really old. The Time Traveler. Oh, we got some Beetlejuice collectibles down below. Oh, I had those guys back in the day. That, that just unlocks core memories. Same with the Vanishing Vault. That, that's actually where I used to keep my Beetlejuice additional head sculpt piece. Because you could pop his head off and he'd have like a shrunken head below. That's where I kept the big top piece. <laughs> back in the Vanishing Vault. Now, I also had these triangular boxes of Power Rangers back in the day. I had the black one, the gr uh, not the green, the black, the blue, and the red, I think. Old school, but awesome. Street Sharks there, very, very cool. I haven't seen a Street Shark in a while. That's, of course, more of the hand puppet street, street Shark, but still very, very cool. Got the Mad Roller Cycle. Man, that thing does look mad. Now, for those of you out there collecting Predator figures right now, this store also seems like it has a wicked selection of Alien and Predator. There's a whole other glassed-in section as well that I'll show you for Predator stuff in a few moments as well. But this definitely gives quite a broad selection of NECA. That Joker my mom gifted me years ago, which is weird, and I had that Batman clock back in the day. That's also kind of fun. Not even that far back, honestly. When I say back in the day for the Batman clock, I mean like 2012. <laughs> We got a new Oogie Boogie Man, you'll love to see it. And some Black Series helmets, very cool. Modok, I wonder what that figure looks like out of the box. Now this store also does have a huge selection of Pokemon cards that I'm not gonna necessarily go through. Oh, we got Thor here, decent. Uh, I'm not gonna go through the Pokemon section, but if you're a Pokemon collector, they do do buys and trades as well, it seems, at the store. So something to consider, especially if you're in the local area. Lots of Back to the Future figures here from NECA, as well as this kind of monsters line of turtles, which I think is really fun. They've got at least April O'Neil there. I see Raphael and Donatello. Elf, that's old school, man. I used to watch Elf like crazy when I was a kid. And I really like this Robocop set. Despite me having the Robocop 3 from Hot Toys, at a smaller scale level, this is pretty solid. And that Peter Weller helmet looks pretty good. E.T. 40th anniversary packaging. E.T. phone home, right? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't buy it, but I like to see E.T. That's kind of still fun. Now, again, we got a huge Ninja Turtles selection here. So let's get a little closer to the rack. We got the pre-bagged versions, the ones that are out of box. So if you're missing a turtle, this is a good place to check out. Some of these are newer school, some of them are older school. Because the old school packaging is being recreated, it's actually making it very difficult to it's actually making it very difficult to tell what are new figures and what are old figures anymore without reading some of the details on the packages themselves. Some of these are pretty classic. 
I'd love to see a Ninja Turtles collection. If any of you guys out there have like the older school Ninja Turtles and have maybe set up like a cool base or diorama display with it, I would love to see that. Ninja Turtles, Batman the Animated Series, I think for the most part were the two things as a kid I would have collected from the most. I don't love a lot of the new Ninja Turtles stuff, though, like some of the new, like I, for me, it's the 80s cartoon or nothing, or the 90s film, the original. That's about it. Every other version of Ninja Turtles I haven't totally loved. Now we're getting closer to the other side of the store here, guys, so I'm going to take you through a little bit more of the McFarlane side and then some of the glass cases. You can see, like, we're about halfway through. I'm still really excited to see what else is in these glass cases on the back side because I haven't had a chance to take a really good look at it yet. Up top of the cases, though, they have random things like Power Rangers droids. We've got costume masks. We just saw some of those Thundercats collectibles. We've got the power loader from Aliens. What the heck? Yeah, some of these are really, really cool. Big Power Rangers selection here, which I appreciate. My younger self definitely would have appreciated it. I love seeing just some of the random collectibles, though, that have existed over time. It's amazing how a store like this just unlocks core memories as I go along. All the different figures I had. And the colors of the toys back in the day, I think, were really standout. Not a section for me, but I can understand the appeal for some folks. There's definitely My Little Pony people out there. No, no, uh, no shame there. <laughs> Got a Lou Ferrigno up in the front. You'll love to see it. Battlestar Galactica. Wow, that's a random pieces mixed together. And a power coin. I love to see that. Little X-Men collection here. I like that Groot, actually. That Groot looks really good. And even the Drax looks pretty good. Hella there and the Thor actually look really, really strong. I like that classic comic Thanos. Modoc there. Definitely doesn't look as weird as Derek did in Quantumania, that's for sure. Some old school turtles. These are the ones that I had. All of them. Back in the day, all of them. And do I know whatever happened to them? No. Unfortunately, they're just gone. So Deadpool. Captain Carter up on top there, that's cool. And some of the what if figures that have become unboxed. Alice Cooper, super random, super, super random. Look at these though, these are some freaky looking collections. The guy's all wired up with tubes, crazy. And we got some Predator uh, characters here as well. Look at the skinned human in the back there. Apologize for the reflection off the glass, but I couldn't open these cabinets up to go through them. Pan's Labyrinth, interesting. Now this is the other aliens section that I was mentioning, where you're going to see some predators in here as well. Yeah, so alien versus predator there. We've got the predator. A couple of different options. I, I think these guys would still pair well with NECA, to be honest. Based on what I can at least tell from the scale standing beside the packaging. The Golden Idol from Indiana Jones doesn't look that great in person, but I think in the right display case with some lighting, that could be really funky. Beetlejuice for me is just amazing. I'm tentatively nervous about the new Beetlejuice movie, I'm not going to lie, with Jenna Ortega and, and everybody returning, but I'm hoping for the best at this point. Splitting headache. Looks like it. Looks like me when I haven't had enough coffee in the morning. Interesting pieces there. Some of these DC superpowered figures, they look a little too weak, uh, in my opinion, but I think some of the packaging is cool. Definitely harkens back to kind of the classic comic book look for some of them. And some of them are cool, I will say. Even like the Aquaman. I like the color of them, honestly. I like the classic orange and the green. Yeah, these little guys, they're okay. I don't love these ones for sure. Ooh, I love to see some Playmates Star Trek. God, this is easily one of my least favorite episodes of Star Trek The Next Generation. But we got a Montgomery Scott in the back. That's a good pickup, potentially. It's a really good pickup. Batmobile up on top. Oh, these things are so weird. The Boglins. Don't like those. Again, it wouldn't be a comic book store or a collectible store without some McFarlane options. Although, 
at least there's a decent array of selection, which I appreciate. They're not all the same figure over and over again. There's a superstore near me that has a toy section that has about 18 of the same different junior supermen and never anything else. Blue Beetle, I'm going to be talking about tonight on Collecting Weekly. Didn't love the film, but I did think the suit was pretty cool. So credit where credit is due. They've got Lego Star Wars ships in here. Quite a broad selection, actually, considering. Definitely some of the more older retro sets. Not really any of the newer stuff from what I can see. And honestly, the Lego figures in those boxes are worth probably as much as the sets are now, at this point. I do need a Foot Clan to go with my Ninja Turtle setup. Creator sets, they've got the Lone Ranger Lego set there, that's interesting. That movie for me was a bit of a flop. Did not love Johnny Depp in that one. Is what it is. Oh, look at the green Nintendo 64. That's cool. That's cool. And the Sega Genesis, that takes me back as well. When I talk to Dean at Collecting Weekly about Sonic, I always think back to my Sonic 2 days on the Sega Genesis. These are all nice looking figures for sure. None of them stand out to me as something that I would put in my collection but I can certainly understand the appeal. Got some Batman statues in here, which is really awesome. I kept my eye out for my buddy Cuervo because he's been looking for a Poison Ivy figure for his kid, but no luck, bud, no luck. I like the Wade Wilson or the Deadpool in the back there. I wonder if that was a custom. Because I don't remember a set where we actually got a Wade from, but I could be mistaken. So correct me if you guys are aware of that one for sure. Seen lots of custom Deadpool Legos though. Again, this is just kind of a brief overview of the Pokemon selection. I'm not going to go into too much detail there. Definitely some old games. I love seeing the old cases for the N64 games and for the Sega Genesis games there. Got some PSP, which I mean, I wonder if anybody still plays the PSP, but if you do, there are games here and lots of Super Nintendo games and even some original cased. N64 pieces, which I really love. Zelda Ocarina of Time will always be my favorite game of all time, and of course I had that on the N64. Green is also my favorite color, so I kind of want that green N64 up there, but I probably don't need it, let's be honest. We got Bowser down below. Cool looking figure. I think that's a newer school collectible, though. I think all of these are from the new film recently, which I didn't love it, to be honest. I wanted to really like it, but the story felt a little soft and weak. I, just, I don't know. It was a good kids movie, but I haven't really felt the need to revisit it since. Some of the NECA, nah. Some of the NECA gremlins, always fun. Got some Simpsons collectibles in here. I love the Batman themed everything, <laughs> basically in this place. The Looney Tunes stuff though is always fun. Harry Potter Looney Tunes there. Bugs Bunny, I love to see that. All the different Pokemon pops. Walks. Interesting. I don't know what this is. Made by Kenner. Oh, they got some 80s puzzles down here. It's pretty cool. I had an early 2000s puzzle. Got the N1 Starfighter up on top. More racks of Star Wars collectibles. Black series. I actually saw from just kind of across the aisle here a really cool looking Thrawn that I'm going to show you guys in a couple minutes. Black series are nice. I like the way they display. Honestly, for figures that if you were to keep them in the box, I actually think they look really classy. For me though, I gotta stay away from the scale. I think that's the hard part. I'd started collecting pieces just to, you know, to buy something, right? Treat yourself a little bit, but not always the best choice. Queen Amidala here. <laughs> Definitely an old school looking Hasbro piece, that's for sure. This is pretty cool. I really like that, actually. The box alone is insane. Now, these are really fun. We got Belosh or Belak. <laughs> I got that dude. Just go grab another door handle. I love how we got the guy who gets hit by the plane propellers fighting Indy. That's awesome. All fun. Oh, even a, even a horse. There you go. Nice little pieces up on top here as well. 
I mean, I think it depends what you're toy hunting for. For me, I'm always hunting for the Batman the Animated Series figures. And lately, Star Trek Playmates figures. I might go back for that Montgomery Scott. Or potentially that shuttlecraft that I saw at the beginning of the video. Big Star Trek nerd, though, while we're looking at Star Wars. Hate to see it. <laughs> Love the old packaging look, though. Those are really fun. And I like that they came with a card in the inside there, the reflective card. That's really cool. These make me laugh. There's a bunch of them. Luke hanging upside down. My goodness. Oh, we got Fred Quimby. I'd love to see that. Again. Oh my god, the octuplets. That's amazing. That's amazing. Luigi. I'm Luigi. Yeah, that's some good ones. I still have Bartman in package from back in the day. I've never taken him out. Now, these definitely look a little more on the premium side based on their packaging. I do like them, although these ones not as much. I know that this was a packaging style that not a ton of collectors had loved. Um, but again, I'm not a huge collector of Star Wars figures, so I could be wrong on that, but at least that's the perception that I was given. And then, of course, single-packaged Star Wars characters, once again, just like some of the other lines that we've seen around the store. If you are in the market for one piece you just are having a hard time finding, you may find it here. Oh, look at the pride droid. That's interesting. I wonder how collectible that piece is now, at this point. This is the Thrawn that I saw across the aisle. I actually really like this Thrawn. It looks like material, even though it's plastic. But I'd definitely be curious to hear back from you guys. What were some things that really stood out to you guys today? Pieces like this George Lucas in Stormtrooper armor. That's something that would appeal to you? Do you guys come in to these stores for the comics or for the collectibles? Maybe it's both. What do you typically toy hunt for? I'm always curious to see what's going to stand out to people. Because again, for me, like I said earlier, this is absolutely just a nostalgia punch in the gut. Everything in here triggers some kind of memory for me. And that's one of my favorite things about collecting. So guys, I'd love to hear from you in the comments down below. What were some of the standout pieces that you saw today as part of the toy tour? Would you visit Airdrie to come to this location specifically? Again, we're talking about Snap Collectibles at their new location in Airdrie, Alberta, Canada. If you are local, please do not miss the opportunity to come to the store. The business owner is fantastic. One of his employees who is typically there all the time, she is very lovely, very knowledgeable with regards to what's in her store. I definitely recommend both of them if you're ever here. Come chat with them, they're great folks. And it sounds like they will do buy, sell, and trades depending on what they're looking for. So something to keep in mind as well if you're shopping your own collection around a little bit. But guys, with that said, that's the video for today. It's another successful toy tour. I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys like these videos, I can start doing them again. There's about 15 toy stores in Calgary that I can revisit. I'm confident all of their stock and selection will be revamped by the time we hit it again. So let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see more of these. But thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys on the next toy tour. I'll be back.